Wow. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever gotten a card quite as wrong as I got UFC on FX2. I got two wins the whole night. But a bit of a dark period here because I also had a pretty damn sh poor showing on the OC in Japan. And that was after, you know, a number of, of very good um, prediction cards. So, you know, here's hoping that the Strike Force card tonight writes my ship and um, gets me going in the right direction again. <laughs> uh, open up the night on the Facebook, Ollie Thompson versus Sean Jordan. I got this one right, but didn't really care. <laughs> there is irony for you. Um, I just don't feel that either of these guys are particularly UFC level. You know, Sean Jordan did a good job, you know, using his tools to, you know, pretty much control this fight, pretty much do do what needed to be done and everything, and, uh, you know, pick the, the W. Um, what's next for him? I'm not tremendously caring. I'm not tremendously caring about Ollie Thompson. I'm sorry. I just don't feel that they're really as skilled. They're, they're very near the bottom of the UFC's heavyweight division. Preliminary card on Fuel TV. We had Mackens Simizizer versus Daniel Pineda. I picked Mackens. Uh, he had armbar pretty quickly by Daniel Pineda. What we learned here is apparently don't kick Daniel Pineda in the balls because he gets really aggressive and finish happy if you do that, apparently. Um, not much to really say about the fight. Um, you know, Mackens was looking pretty good up until, like I said, the ball shot, and then Pineda turned on, picked a finish. Very nice armbar triangle. Um, what's next for Pineda? You know what? Uh, you were supposed to do Mack and Semzer versus Robert Peralta at some point, but that fight seems to be losing steam as Mackens' record in Zufa products is, and overall is just not tremendously good. So maybe do Pineda versus Peralta. That would be, you know, that would kind of make some sense. TJ Wahlberger versus Jake Heck. I took Heck. Um, just a note for Jake Heck, never throw a leg kick again. That was ugly. Um, in the end, though, Waldenberger takes him down, arm bars him. Um, if Waldenberger gets on top of you and you're not like one of the top five grapplers in the welterweight division, um, you're probably in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and he did it again. He took down Heck, which was something I didn't think that he particularly could do because Heck is a very good wrestler. Waldenberger, you know, he's an okay wrestler. He's not. He's not weak. But he's he, against D1 wrestlers. He shouldn't really have a great deal of success with takedowns, and he did. So, I mean, that's kind of all there's to it. Next for Wahlberg, I always like seeing Wahlberg fight other grapplers. I really do. Uh, Paulo Tiago might be a little too high up on the ch food chain at this point, but I don't know. Hoka also would be too far up, I think. If you're trying to set him up for. A fight that he can win, anyways. Um, I'm trying to think of somebody. That's really not coming to mind. But I mean, his fight with David Mitchell was very exciting. That was battle two grapplers. You know, ground game being exciting. I know, novel idea. Um, damn, I, I really don't know. Uh, <laughs> just give him someone who knows how to grapple and won't try to sprawl and brawl him. That would be probably a good idea. Kondo versus Andrew Craig. Um, I did say that this was probably going to be the bad decision. I know it wasn't. Andrew Craig won this fight, uh, second and third round, even though know, the first round. And I don't get it. Normally, when you you see a case of just utter jet lag, it's it's the visiting dude, not the hometown guy. But Kyle Noak just seemed to die. Um, his stand up lost something. His wrestling lost something. His ground game lost something. It's like. The Kyle Noak you got in the first round was completely different from the Kyle Noak in the second and third round. Anyways, a very solid debut for Andrew Craig. Um, as for who he should fight next, I don't really know. Um, it depends on how far you want to put him up on the ladder, I guess, because I mean he, he, he did debut with a very big win over a guy like Kyle Noak. You know, that normally would propel you into a top, we'll say, 15 matchup. But I'm not really sure if Craig's ready for that. We'll see what they do with him. Steven Seiler beating another Miller brother. Good work, Steven Seiler, Super Steve. Um, Cole Miller 
looked, I thought, a little dead at 145. Not that he gassed, you know, tremendously or anything like that, but perhaps uncomfortable is the word. And he should probably go back to 155. As for Steven Seiler, you know what? He's basically earned himself a UFC spot, that's for sure, at this point. Um, you know, for a guy who wasn't terribly rated coming off the show. You know, he's beaten Josh Compton. He's beaten, you know, Cole Miller. He got to win over Mike Miller on the show. You know, he's definitely headed places. Um, although, I do worry about him versus a guy with really good wrestling. I do worry about that. As for who he should fight, I don't know. You know, do you, really, do you want to test that theory and put him up against a wrestler? You can do that. If you want a more exciting fight, you could pick a guy who, you know, kind of wants to stand and bang a little bit more. So we'll see. That's another one that, uh, honestly, I don't think there's one tremendously right answer. Answer Anthony Parash beating Nick Penner via TKO stoppage with one second on the clock. Um, and I don't blame it. I'm sorry. Say by the bell when you're doing what Nick Penner was doing. It is not an option. He's just getting killed in the second round. Um, Penner looked good early on, and then it seemed like, and, you know, people are going to say, making excuses. But Octagon debut, plus fighting in Australia. I know Andrew Craig handled it very well, but I do wonder, you know, how good of an idea that is, um, if you're not an Aussie. You know, he managed to get up from underneath Parash. He, you know, he looked good, and then he just died, and that's all there is to say. Parash's success is, is truly confusing to me because he's a man who's almost 40. He, you know, prior to this sort of renaissance of his career, had, you know, beaten his, his biggest wins were over Mal and Matt Fokey. I mean, lost to Wellish, lost to Munson, lost to Sam Ness, lost to Moist Rimbaum, lost to James Tahuna, lost to Crow Cop. But a bad looking Crow Cop at that. And, you know, I, it's, it's really come out of kind of nowhere. And, you know, what's next for him? Probably about time to give him a grappler because he keeps beating these, you know, striker kind of guys. So, I mean, I guess if you want to put him up in the world, I mean, Tom Blackledge is kind of a grappler, but not really a grappler. Um, if you want to really get a feel for him, you know, put him up. Maybe, you know what? We could always do the battle of the old men. Parash, Vladimir Matushik. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's what I'm going to say we put together. All right. James Tuna came out and just wrecked Aaron Rosa at a loss for me that I saw coming. Um, if Tuna was going to win this fight, it was going to be exactly how Tuna won the fight. But um, it's still disappointing. Next for Rosa, I was like quite possibly cutting him because he's not looked good in any of his three UFC fights, which is weird because if you're familiar with Aaron Rosa pre UFC, he was a pretty, I don't want to say prospect because he's an old. You know, he's not tremendously, tremendously young, but, um, you know, definitely a, a very good uh, journeyman, and uh, his UFC career has just not been very good. To who I would like to see fight striker. I uh, would really enjoy that. His fight with Pekriyach was pretty exciting. Um, someone up the food chain probably as well. Stefan Bonner comes to mind, being his perhaps an option. He did a good job on uh, on the uh, breakdowns tonight with him and Chael Sun. It was a bit silly, I think, perhaps for. I mean, you might want to go a more professional direction, but you now it's good once in a while to be silly, I suppose. Court McGee, Constantine, Philippou. This fight went a lot like I thought it would, except that it took Court McGee longer to get going. Um, good work from Costa Philippou, which, and this is just weird because I me, mean, of course, Costa Philippou lost the fight to get in the house to the season of the Ultimate Fighter, that was won by Court McGee. So, wow. Uh, I think it kind of proves that some of the gems do get knocked out very early in the Ultimate Fighter. Um, anyways, Costa Philippou, good win. And you're moving up. I mean, it was a good fight. I enjoyed it. Uh, Court was doing his typical thing of getting stronger as the fight went on. And I do wonder, perhaps, the fact that this was his first fight back from uh, knee surgery had a bit of a role in it. A little bit, maybe. Not tremendously, I don't think, though. Um, goes once again, don't pick guys coming out of knee surgery. I really need to stop doing that. Um, 
it was a good job for for Costa. You know, put him up there against you know. I'd like to see him fight another banger. Um, we actually hear the the sim league are having him fight Chris Lieben. So maybe do that one in real life. I'd love to see that. Demetri Johnson, Ian McCall in a draw. I scored it for Ian McCall because I gave him the first and third rounds. I suppose the draw is not out of the question, but they announced it originally as a Demetri Johnson win, and I was like, UFC judging, you have fucked up once again. And I still think they fucked up because one of the judges still gave it to Demetri Johnson, and no. No, 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 no. You could maybe get that first round of draw, then give Johnson the second, and give McCall the third, and you get yourself a draw. Or a win if you go 10 8 McCall in the third, which I personally would. I did. I scored 29 27. Apparently, no judges did. Um, this is, I suppose, the problem with the UFC is that um, we really need to be more um, encouraged to go 10 8 10 10. So, we're going to get the rematch between those two. First spot in the finals against Joe Benavides, who basically destroyed. Yashiro Yoshitani, so what's next for him is duh. Um, and then we go to the main event, Martin Camp and Tiago Alves. Alves looking good until he got stupid. He rocked Campman pretty good, and had he just kept throwing punches in the third round, he would have finished him. No, he goes for a takedown. Oh, this is the irony, is I picked him because I thought he was the smarter fighter of the two, and that Campman was the one who would do stupid stuff. It was completely reversed. Ah. Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do about some of these fighters at times. I really don't. Just turned off of picking Alvis and Campman from this point onwards, I think. Um, next for Martin Campman, you know, he talked about he wanted to fight Condit because Condit's, you know, he's got to win over Condit. I think that's probably too much of a step up for a guy who, you know, he's, he's won two in a row, but Rick Story was, he was getting beat. And then Story tore his meniscus, and Alves was beating him, and then did something stupid. Um, so it's not, you know, it is two wins. It is two wins over two good guys, but it, it was just kind of unconvincing. Of course, before that, he lost to Sanchez and Shields and controversial fast. Um His last, you know, good win though, Paulo Thiago, in uh, 2010. So, but that being said, you know, put him up in the more area of contending. Maybe him next for Jake Ellenberger. That's a possibility. Maybe him Maybe him versus Nick Diaz. That would actually be an interesting comeback fight for Nick. But I think Nick's, Nick's going to be off too long for that to be an option. Um, maybe a rematch with Sanchez. I don't know. There's a lot of options for Martin Cannon. Um, as for Thiago Alves. You know, he seemed to be getting his game right, and his cardio looked better than it has in a while. So, that's good. Who do you throw him in there against? Probably, you know, someone he can beat. Might, not, <laughs> might be a good idea, but someone with some relevance. Um, you know, a Charlie Brenneman or a... Yeah, Charlie Brenneman actually sounds kind of perfect. Um, although Brenneman did get skull-fucked by Anthony Johnson. Um, still... You know, do that or Alves versus Dan Hardy if you feel sick and twisted. Um, anyways, my predictions or not predictions? That's my breakdown aftermath, matchmaking, etc. Enjoy the Strike Force fights tonight.